Hello, happy Monday. Um, it's a very dull, sort of drizzly um, Monday here today and um, I'm actually home alone for once. It doesn't happen very often and I thought I would uh, make a video with sort of a studio tour and maybe a little chat about what Thistle and Brambles actually is. In retrospect, that should have probably been the first video I ever made, but it wasn't. So um, here we go. Better uh, late than never, I guess. I um, started, I really want to stop saying um. I find myself saying um all the time, even though I quite clearly know what I'm going to say next. And it's kind of, I'm annoying myself. So apologies for that. Anyway, moving on. I started Thistle and Brambles back in 2020, like many other businesses that I've gotten to know recently. And it started here in my living room. Now, we're a family of five living in a three bed kind of mobile home caravan, static caravan, trailer, tons of names for it. And I will probably do like a little tour of how we've renovated the space to um, accommodate us living. So it started here in my living room when I was just kind of experimenting and figuring out what I was doing. And that was perfectly fine. There was space. My youngest was only just born, so she wasn't moving and getting into things. The other two were kind of old enough to understand and leave my things alone. And it worked fine for a while. Then last summer, we kind of made the decision that I needed to move out of the living room because it was just taking up too much space. The kids needed more play space. And we have a fairly decent garden. At the back of the garden, we had this, um, we called it the bus stop, but it was actually a trolley bay from Aldi, I believe, you know, where you put the trolleys in so they don't get wet in the car park. There was a big one of those there. It was already here when we moved in. That's where I used to dry my laundry. So, so handy for that. Um, but it was also kind of, you know, a lot of dead space. I'm, so I'm just realizing I'm looking at the office. I'm not even looking at you. So we um, decided to take it down and build a little shed, which I will show you now at the back of the garden. It's two meters by three meters on the inside. And then there's a one meter porch with kind of an overhanging roof, which means that I can still dry my laundry there. A uh, little bit of a warning. I didn't really do very much of a tidy up because when I was getting inspiration for this build, which we didn't do, by the way, we got someone else to do it for us. When I was getting inspiration, trying to look at the decorations and the decor and the inside and organization, I kept seeing all of these really nice videos of really beautiful workspaces. And I have taken inspiration and I appreciate seeing nice, beautiful things, but I knew that I wasn't going to maintain that. So, yeah, it, this is very much a working in office and I was working yesterday and I will be working after I finish this. So it is not the neatest, but hopefully you enjoy it nevertheless. OK, so here it is, the back of the garden. Um, you can see the kids have got some of their place stuff and we've got the little greenhouse and we have our stone shed there at the back and our cherries that are turning red and our almonds at the back growing bigger yeah this is the little office build <laughs> actually this isn't finished there's some bits like up above there that we still haven't gotten around to finishing it's kind of something that you'll see a lot on my DIY projects we start things we get it to a point start working on it and then um <laughs> things get left behind they don't get finished but I'll show you everything that we've done and um yeah hopefully you can get a little bit of sense of the space that I've got to work with and um some inspiration maybe because that's what I use these videos for so you walk in and this is what you see. My machines down at the back. Some, you know, my shelf of tennis balls. Doesn't everyone have that in their office? The laptop stuff and printer. We've got my cutting table. We've got my mess of things because I'm in the middle of doing markets. And my pretty wall of other people's arts. I absolutely love this. And then some more decor there. The, the first thing I'm going to show you is my cutting table. So I got two secondhand Kallaxes. Now, for some reason, they were different 
additions because they've got different heights which is kind of annoying and my cutting mat is bigger than the calyx themselves but that's not an issue also i did put the inserts in myself which is why they're wonky so down there is just random things like bags and other pieces of fabric that i'm not using and here i have my um no issue mailers that i use to mail things out and then here is just all sort of packing supplies and actually this is my cutting bits drawer then whoops my stamps and some old labels that i don't use anymore and things for packing up here oh are my cards you have to move this a little bit and my business cards and my swing tags tissue paper and so this side is kind of for that sort of thing because it's also right across from it is where I have the label printer, the printer for printing patterns and the laptops. Um, and those sort of bits are all here. An old coffee machine, which the kids play with it more than I actually use it to make coffee. My wax melter and just those sort of more office -y bits. Because then the rest of this unit is just boxes of fabric. So most of the fabric... And things that I've made are in boxes because I'm always afraid that they're going to get smells and I don't want to um oh here I open the door and the cat comes in and I don't want his fur everywhere sorry dude go back out here go 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 bye yeah so I don't want smells and hair for example with the cat uh, from getting into any of these fabrics so I keep them all in boxes some of them are out right now because I was in the middle of an was working yesterday and I'm cutting and sewing so I just got these cheap plastic tubs and it's just they're up everywhere and then these are my bolts that don't fit in which is fine um I know a lot of people who keep the fabric fabrics out in the open and don't have an issue with it so you know hopefully they'll be okay there they haven't actually been there for very long back to this side then the other side of my calyx, I have boxes where when I'm cutting pieces, I can just put them here. And these are the pieces that are cut, that need to be sewn. And then when I finish sewing stuff, put them in here, ready for the iron. Oh, sorry, that was my phone was about to fall. Down there, just random pieces of woven cotton. This is my bin bag and my scrap bag where I make the free scrap bags or then I go through it and make bows and stuff with it. And then down here are my patterns. Some of them are loose, some of them are in folders and they're all just sort of thrown in here. And then the way I use my cutting table, I'm gonna move my coffee. I have the cutting mat up here, but because our window, which we actually got from a skip basically, someone replaced their windows, so it's a nice bedroom double glazed window. Um, when you lift this, I've got my flat lay surfaces. I've got a pine one and I've got a gray wooden one and I get the sunlight straight through here. And if I open the door, it gets better lighting, which is um, nice for the photos. And then my sewing table. So it's just a two meter tabletop from Ikea on top of two Alex drawer units and then just some pretty stuff. That old overlocker, that was my first ever overlocker. He's a bit old and tired. I have him as a backup, but everything is sewn on this overlocker and that sewing machine that's kind of covered. Now here's a pile of doom. I have a bed in here that I need to build for Liam's room, a telescope because everyone needs a telescope in their office. And my radiator for winter, my iron and my ironing stuff. And I do have things stored in those uh, drawers, but I haven't seen them in a while. So I have no idea what's actually in there. But there is stuff in there. And here's the stuff that I use more often. Threads, all piled up. Threads and elastics. And then my labels. Oh, these are actually quite neat. Um, so it's quick for me to get to them. And then... There's not really much else here, just stuff. And I think that this one's empty because, yeah, I have quite a lot of storage and I don't need to use all of it yet, which is quite handy. But yeah, it's small, but does a job. And I love my lamps and I love this table. 
I know it's, I don't actually need the two meters, but it's nice to have if you can fit a big table, definitely fit a big table. And then I mentioned my wall of art. I can't draw, um, but I know a few people who have businesses and can, and I've actually become friendly with them, which is really nice to have sort of a small business community. And they've all done these different pieces and I just love having them here. I use them for flat lays and just to have my little cute corner. So I think that's it. That's kind of a very quick overview of my little office. Um, if you've got any questions or anything, do let me know. Um, but yeah, we didn't, again, we didn't build it all ourselves, so I can't give you any information on the actual building. We bought the materials and then we paid someone else labour to build it. And then we actually, with the inside, we did ourselves. So we stuffed the um, styrofoam for the insulation and then we put the walls up, hence like some of the wood doesn't line up. We've never done anything like that. So we did that ourselves. I never bothered to put in flooring. I just left with the plywood. I was going to put a rug, but then I was worried with all the threads that it'd be kind of hard to keep clean. So it's just a wooden floor. Um, it, it, the insulation isn't amazing. It is insulated and the window's double glazed. In winter, it does get cold and I can turn the heater on, but it has sort of a, a membrane to stop most of the humidity to come through. So I haven't had a problem with like machines or paper getting wet or the fabric getting damaged. And it'll be, I think August will be, no, September will be a year that I started um, working in here. So nearly a full year. And it's just it's been great it's just it's made such a difference um i think we were looking at getting a little shed that was about half the size of this i think it was the same width or maybe a little bit less wide and about half the length and that would have been nearly a grand with the delivery this ended up all in being three thousand so it's not cheap um it is cheaper than like one of the lock cabins it is smaller um took us i think two weeks to get up and it was built sort of to the space that we had. So that was really, really handy. And I'm gr very grateful that we managed to get that done because I've been able to expand and try new things. And I'm looking into doing adult clothing, which I just did not have space to cut fabric for adult clothing inside. I was having to cut on the dining table and then sew on my table, which meant I have to have the dining table clean, the floor around the dining table clean in case fabric fell around it. And it was just becoming really, really stressful. So, I am very grateful for this little space and uh, I hope you enjoyed a little look into my office. So thank you for watching and any questions, let me know. Thank you. Mm -hmm.